Another wonderful, wonderful, sunny day on the wet coast. The fall season here has been unseasonably nice. We've had very little rain and uh, lots of sunshine. I think that's probably due to the Arctic blast that's barreling down through the prairie provinces in the American Midwest. It's keeping the nasty low systems off the coast and giving us some beautiful weather. Anyway, I thought I'd bring you up to speed on what's going on in the boat. So this is the port side cap rail and this is the problematic cleat right here. When I put this cap rail on a couple of years ago, I misaligned it and the holes for the cleat that are in the cap rail were too far to the outside. So I had to lift it and realign it and drill new holes, well fill and drill new holes. And and at the same time I thought I might as well just take that home and, and finish it, which I did. So you can see it's a nice beautiful glossy finish on that. That's Interlux perfection as compared to that, which is simply epoxy, penetrating epoxy. So those pieces there and the boom can will have to be refinished at some point, but I won't be doing that this winter because weather, it's a little cool out and there's, as you can see, moisture, which is detrimental to perfection perfecting. <laughs> so that's the update there. This was very difficult to mount. On that one, there is a plate. I've got a plate with nuts welded to the underside of it and the um, screws, bolts going through it just to give it that extra bit of holding power should there be a shock load or anything. This one here, the, the width of the bulwark is narrower than the other side and so I could not get a plate up in there. There's also a, a bolt from the original cleat that's basically underneath this post here. So these uh, two bolts and their their nuts um, are ob obstructed by that bolt that's coming down there and there isn't enough room inside here to get a tool up like a vice grip or a hammer or anything else to knock that out so there's also a problem just trying to get my hand up there to put any kind of a fastener on the back of these things I put nuts and washers on all of them except for that one there and there was only enough room to get a nut on it. So I'm hoping that over time that that won't pull through, work through. And I don't think it will. The original installation just had uh, washers and nuts on there. And it didn't look like there was any uh, stress on it. So I'm just going to leave it like that. In the meantime, today I'm going to, I'm going to attempt an install of the port side fuel tank been a long time coming and I've been kind of putting it off because it's just such a difficult job but it needs to be done the uh, calendar days are slipping past really quickly I do want to go sailing next summer and I cannot do that without having a functioning engine to get out of the hole here this little mooring field right there this is a little private marina but to get out of here this is actually a river and I need to be able to navigate the river and I can't do that without a motor. It'd be next to impossible to sail it out of here so I need my motor running. In order to have the motor running I need to have fuel tanks. I've got one, one fuel tank is already installed. It's not completely hooked up. Most everything on it is hooked up but I need to install a, a, a filter system on that for the, for the engine. I've got one in there. Um, and I need to hook up the the diesel heater. I've got the hardware plumbing to do that. Um, just haven't gotten around to it. So today I am going to face the beast and get back down into the cockpit and see if I can't get the remaining tank in there and hooked up. The installation of the, this tank will be following the same procedure as for the starboard tank. I need to mount the fittings properly and permanently. I need to extend the 
I need to extend the fuel gauge sender with a bit of wire, and I need to put the fuel hose on it. And I need to do that before this thing goes up inside because it's just too awkward to try and do it afterwards. That's the plan. Well, see anyway. how it goes, as in all boat things, especially plans of mice and men. <laughs> we'll see. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some uh, Teflon tape on this and tighten it up. Part of getting the fuel tank back in is to repair a job that I've already done. The little rubber mats that I glued into place to go underneath the fuel tanks, uh, I put in with contact cement and three out of five on the port side have come out. The uh, glue didn't hold. So I am currently re-gluing them with a different product. I'm using um, S3 Systems epoxy and I think that should probably hold it real good um, unfortunately that means that I might be having some issues getting the the tank installed but we'll see I'm gonna put them in anyway and then go ahead and try and fit the tank and if it's gonna be problematic oh well I have the uh, fuel sender wire connected and extended and now I'm going to put the fuel hose on. Look. As I was working on putting the fuel pickup in, I discovered that the uh, production values on this particular product are quite bad and the aluminum has galled. So the inside threads of the pickup and the outside threads on the barb that goes into the pickup were basically trashed. I stopped short of actually wrecking the things. I thought maybe it can be fixed. Uh, at in the next video, I, I uh, talk about either replacing it or repairing it. And we'll leave that as a little mystery for the next video to see what happens there. In the meantime, fair winds, following seas, God bless.